Hi, we are FlockApp and we are creating a web app for plant operators to use to check the size of a flock. So the current problem we're trying to solve is that um, turbidity measurements are time consuming and they don't tell plant operators how much coagulant to add to the water. And so FlockApp is designing an app that will expedite the feedback cycle on the coagulation process. Uh, to do this, we are creating a web application that will count and size the flocks and using the data from um, our scripts the coagulation teams will have more accurate data to, um, or within a faster time frame, and they can use that to adjust the coagulant levels. And ultimately, the solution will save time and cost for the plants, and also this web application will work offline to ensure that plant operators can access the data, um, even if they don't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, so in the past, FlockApp has written the scripts that are capable of proce processing images taken by a microscopic camera, and from those images, it counts and sizes the flocks within them. Um, so this works by uh, locating the individual flocks and then grouping together closely located flocks into a single la um, larger flock. Um, the images are passed through a black and white filter in order to more easily detect the flocks. And the team has designed the GUI for displaying all the necessary buttons for the app. Um, this semester, we worked on adding functionality to, the, to those buttons. Um, in order to build the app, we used many different tools. First off, we were programming using Python, and um, because of that, we used PyCharm and VS Code as our integrated development environments because they work well with the language. We, we also used GitHub for version control and OpenCV for its um, real-time computer vision capabilities that are necessary for real-time image processing. Uh, we also use SQLite as our database management um, to store data gathered from the size and count scripts. So past team members and I have had issues downloading all the different tools and getting them all to be compatible with each other. And they get updated regularly, so past solutions often no longer work after new updates. And so I decided it would be valuable to create an install guide for both future new members and plan operators so that they can have a smooth onboarding process. And the guide details how to install all the different tools, which she, which Dana just, or Jessica just talked about, sorry. Um, <laughs> and then, namely it uses Homebrew, which is a package manager to um, help make all the installs easier and make everything go more smoothly. And it's designed for a Mac user. So for a method and process, um, to start with our process, we started with just setup. Uh, we updated Python and Anaconda and installed PyQWERTY and OpenCV. Also, we connected um, the computers in, down in the lab because we thought that microscopic cameras only um, connect to the window settings. And also, we familiarized with the previous codes and learned the appropriate skills of OpenCV, SQLite, and PyQT through the tutorials. And then we went on to writing our own code. So for our method, um, there are three parts to our app. The first one is the code that analyzes the flock size and numbers. Um, so for the code, uh, we have the code from the previous years, so we focused on testing the existing code using the photos taken from previous years. Uh, for the front end, we uh, first connected the cameras to the app, and uh, we saw that it successfully connected to other um, cameras, which, are, which can be connected to the computer using USB. Um, but for the testing purposes, we connected to our webcams and took photos and um, implemented more functionalities to it. One is that it takes pictures every five seconds and it connects to the database. And for the backend, we uh, finished creating our back um, database and connected it to our front end. So every time it takes a picture, it does it applies the analysis code and sends the data to the database. Um, so this slide depicts the uh, front end of the app. So as you can see um, in the diagram that we created, um, on the left-hand side, we have the uh, application that any um, 
current operator would use. So as you can see, the biggest window um, is would be connected to the microscopic camera. Um, so this camera would be attached to um, uh, the passing of turbid water. Um, so that is what um, the app would be taking images of. Um, so once the client operator presses the red button, uh, which is at the bottom, uh, the, picture, uh, the pictures begin. So um, the, the, the location where the pictures are stored can be changed using um, the, the folder uh, icon at the bottom. Uh, and these folders are continuously taken and stored on a time increment that can be set by the client operator. Um, so for example, every five seconds. Um, then the client op operator can stop this process using the stop button, which is next to um, the start button. Uh, and finally, uh, the client operator also has the option to export the data that we retrieve. So once all of these images are taken and stored simultaneously, um, our web application is also determining the size and the count of the flocks in the window that was uh, taken by the images. Um, and then once the, the, this count and size is determined, it is stored in an Excel spreadsheet that can be exported and saved and used in any way by the client operator. Eventually, in future semesters, we hope to take all of this data and use it to determine if the client operator should add more or less coagulant and eventually automate this process. So this is um, a video of the front end, as you can see, working in real time. Um, and as you can see, the person pressed the red button to begin the process, and now on an interval of approximately five seconds, different images are being taken and stored. Um, and then the person is stopping um, the process, and eventually all of um, the data can be exported as well. Um, and finally, in the back end, uh, the purpose, uh, the way that we stored all of the information was using a database called SQLite, which Jessica had mentioned previously. We decided on SQLite because um, it works well offline, and our worry that was that um, client operators may not have reliable access to Wi-Fi, so this makes the process significantly easier and safer um, and more efficient for the client operator if all of the data is being stored without um, access to Wi-Fi. Um, the purpose of this database is to store the count and size of the flocks. Um, and each flock is assigned a unique ID, um, and this database has uh, the ability, which we wrote ourselves, to add, remove, and retrieve the data of specific flocks. Um, then finally, uh, we added the uh, export functionality um, in order for there to be some sort of communication between the front end and the back end, and for a plant operator to be able to access what is in the back end. So as for future tests, um, we will use the camera to actually test our application and see if it works. Um, and then also we're going to be improving our flock detection algorithm because currently we use an arbitrary threshold to determine the difference between the backgrounds of images and the flocks themselves, but that's probably not very accurate. So in the future, we're going to use um, gradients to detect the edges of each flock and more accurately determine the size of each flock and how many there are. Um, we will also be storing more information, um, storing the data or the date and time of photos in the database. Um, and also we plan on adding functionality to the app where um, it'll make it easier for the user to either uh, remove some data, uh, get a specific uh, data from certain times and dates, and possibly, um, yeah, get all the data at once. And then in the long term, we're going to determine how much coagulant to add to um, the water based on analysis of the count and size of flocks. Um, yeah, and just to add on to that, uh, for future semesters, we also hope to work with members of different teams um, for example, people who have greater knowledge of the actual flocculation process. That way we could test to see if our app works um, and can eventually use data um, to determine if we should add more or less coagulant. Um, because currently, um, everybody on the team only has um, knowledge about more of the 
computer science and programming side, but the purpose of Aquaflora is to um, have a more interdisciplinary approach. Uh, so if we have the knowledge of other team members and the flocculation process, then uh, we can use their knowledge to help us determine uh, whether our algorithm is efficient or not and use um, like uh, use all of the information together to make a product that will actually be implemented. Um, so finally, if you have any questions or recommendations, all of our emails and our contact information is on this slide. Thank you so much.